Hello, this is Britt Caswell with another example video. In today's video, I'm covering example 2 from section 7-4 in the Savas Realized Algebra 2 textbook. The goal of today's video is to identify the amplitude and the period of a function. So recall, the amplitude is the distance from a midline to the top of the bottom of the graph. And an amplitude is a physical distance. It's something that's measurable. So when we find an amplitude, what we do is we take the number that's being multiplied to our, our trig function, in this case it's 3, and I make sure to take the absolute value of it so that I always get a positive number. So the amplitude of this function is 3. Now the period has a very nice equation. The period is 2 pi divided by our b value where b is the number in front of the x inside of our, si our trig function. So the period of this function is 2 pi divided by 1, because there's a 1 in front of x. So I would say it's a period of 2 pi. So in terms of what this graph would look like, right? this is a, a parent function for a cosine graph, but instead of stopping at 1 and negative 1, it would go up to 3 and down to negative 3. So it would just be elongated. All right, now for part 2, or sorry, part B, now we're dealing with a couple of spicy things to it. So when we deal with the amplitude, again, we take the absolute value of the expression in front of our trig function. So I'm taking the absolute value of negative 1 here, which is 1. Now what that negative is doing is that negative is flipping our sine graph upside down. All right, it has a job, it's just not included as part of the amplitude. Okay. And then in terms of our period, we do 2 pi divided by our b value, which is the number in front of x. So 2 pi divided by 2. So the period of this function is pi. So let's go ahead and let's try graphing this so that you just understand what these have done to impact our graph. All right, so here's our kind of basic graph paper, right? All right, now the parent function, I'm going to go ahead and put that parent function on here, goes 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, and remember, it makes a curve, not a V. Okay. So there's my cosine. Or, I'm sorry. I just graphed cosine, not sine. Ha ha, get it together, Miss C. The sine function goes 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. There we go. So you should have an S shape. Easy fix, right? It's just change what shape you're dealing with. All right. So now when we look at this, this amplitude is going to just impact our minimum and maximum values because this one will come down here and this one will move up here. That's all that that negative does is it flips it around this axis. Now the 2x here, that's what makes things interesting. It's saying that we complete this S shape by pi instead of by 2 pi. So we are literally cutting the distance that the sine wave travels in half. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each of these anchor points and cut their distance from this y-axis in half. So let's look at what that looks like. So there we go. instead of this end point going to 2 pi, it's going to go to pi. Instead of this midpoint going to pi, it's going to go to pi over 2. And so what that does is that makes me need to cut some quarters here instead of halves. So this one here is going to be pi over 4, and this one's going to be 3 pi over 4. And so this anchor point, instead of being at pi, like half a pi, would be at a fourth of pi. And the negative causes it to be down here. And this one, instead of being at 3 pi over 2, is now at 3 pi over 4. And the negative sign makes it come up like this. So this function graphs like this. All right. So let's try it with some of these triads now. 
So our amplitude, again, is the absolute value of the number in front of the trig function, as long as it's multiplication. So our amplitude in this case is one third. And our period for this function is two pi divided by this B value, so divided by one half. So that's a fraction with a fraction in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep change flip that. So I'm keeping my two pi, changing this from division to multiplication, and I'm flipping that one half upside down. So my period in this case is four pi. So this acted like a stretch. So where the two X compressed it, this one would stretch our function to take twice as long to, to solve out or to go through. All right, so now for part B, our amplitude is the absolute value of the number in front. So our absolute, or our amplitude is two. And our period in this case is two pi divided by our B value, which is pi. So our period in this case is two. So there we have it guys, that is how to identify the amplitude and the period and a little bit of how it changes the look of the graph. Until next time.